This edition of iItaly New York is brought to you by L'energia non si ferma mai L'energia crea si trasforma diventa un'idea per generare nuova energia Diamo all'energia un'energia nuova So what are we going to do at Expo? We'll get to know more than 140 countries and Italian excellence all in one place. We'll discover the world's biggest restaurant. We'll go to the shopping supermarket of the future. At Expo, we'll ask a lot of questions and get the answers from the world's finest minds. We'll take part in shows in a theater under the stars. And we'll discover that food is joy because food is life. Expo Milano 2015, the grand worldwide food event is coming. So have you got your ticket? On this week's episode, events, Mediterranean Diet Roundtable, a nutritional milestone. The first Mediterranean Roundtable here in New York. City, a celebration of the 40th anniversary of the National Italian American Foundation at Cipriani's on 42nd Street here in New York City. And now let's start with Mediterranean Diet Roundtable. Mediterranean Diet uh, Roundtable, beginning with a very um, personal story. I have two kids in uh, the school system, and so I started to dig a little bit um, more inside the realm of uh, what's happening in the schools, in the systems, colleges, universities, as well as hospitals. And what I found out is that um, there is a dichotomy, discrepancy between what's preached and what you're actually going to get. I said, why don't we try to create communication channels and give an opportunity to people to connect and discuss what do you do in uh, your organization and uh, what are your challenges. It's not enough to have a good food service. It's also a matter of finding uh, the right ingredient, the way you display the menu engineering, the way you strategize in size portions, and hopefully we will get a better Healthier America. We serve 45,000 meals a day and about 5 million meals a year. So, just like city, we serve every day. And also, we probably serve 15 world cuisine every meal. Our mission is healthy, sustainable, delicious. We know that health and wellness is so important to our customer. They want small portion, they want uh, the food that are fresher, they also want to eat more fruit and vegetable, and then more seafood, and then less red meat. And I think the MET diet is what we are, are, are looking for and what they look for now in the future. It's the only diet that has been medically proven to decrease the risk of heart disease, cancer, and for people to live longer. The Mediterranean diet is characterized by a balanced omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. So it's a diet that's much closer to the way human beings evolved. It is an anti-inflammatory diet because olive oil is a perfect oil, not only in terms of fatty acids, but because of a number of special compounds like phenols that increase the nutritional quality. So it's perfect. And you have to understand that uh, there are a section in this country that they still cook with the lard, the fats. So it hasn't been easy. I mean, we've increased, of course, the, the awareness and the consumption of the olive oils, but we still have a long way to go. Over the years, of course, we've done a lot of study, and we've done a lot of marketing, a lot of advertising, all around the Mediterranean diet. It's uh, maybe 40 years now. So it's a mission for you right now. It's been a great journey. 
this is a fantastic idea because for the first time the audience and also the other panels have been constituted by operators in the, in the, in the food supplier and this kind of exchange is the real goal of this amazing conference because a small changes inside the food chain we really have terrific effect in terms of global health. Healthy aging is the mission. La pasta è il piatto proprio principe della dieta mediterranea ed è un qualcosa che eh, per fortuna è molto apprezzato anche qui negli Stati Uniti e vogliamo che sia sempre più apprezzato. È importante far capire agli americani che la pasta non fa ingrassare ed è una percezione che purtroppo c'è abbastanza eh, forte eh, negli Stati Uniti, ma lì è un discorso anche di dosaggio e di porzioni e di condimento. It's incredibly important. So often Americans don't, don't know how to properly eat pasta. It's the pasta that's healthy and then what they do to it is very often not healthy. So I want to talk about those healthy pairings, putting it with other fresh vegetables, lean proteins, healthy fat. You don't have to have the American way with macaroni and cheese or the Alfredo sauces and things that are heavy. There's these wonderful, delicious culinary Mediterranean diet ways of enjoying pasta. And that's what I want to talk about. La dieta mediterranea è anche fatta soprattutto di prodotti di, com di componenti di altissima qualità. È una cucina semplice, versatile, anche economica da questo punto di vista, ma deve essere fatta con componenti di altissima qualità. Quindi sì, sicuramente il cibo italiano parte già con un livello elevato, però sicuramente chi, chi lo produce, l'azienda produttrice, non è neutro in questo processo. Non tutti gli oli d'oliva italiani sono uguali, non tutte le paste fatte in Italia sono uguali, sicuramente i processi e l'attenzione al processo è fondamentale. Questi sono prodotti che vengono dalla lavorazione di quelle mucche che fanno la transumanza, ciò vuol dire animali che stanno al pascolo 365 giorni l'anno. Vuol dire arrivare a portare una delle eccellenze che ormai andava quasi perduta riproponendo la, la cultura, la tradizione e il buon mangiare. I prefer the wine from the Mediterranean area because for the most uh, part I found that to be more honest wine. Grow grapes that grow in the region is the same way the food grows in the region, so therefore you get the perfect combination of wine and food. I think it's a great trend uh, for Americans to adopt the Mediterranean diet. It is a very, very healthy cuisine. It is the world's healthiest cuisine. It's known for that. I must confess, I love pasta. Next time we are trying also to add a component of the tasting because it's good to talk but it's even better to taste the difference. Coming up next, our exclusive event, Wanna Come With Us? Our 40th anniversary starts at the end of April, so this is our kickoff celebration for 40 years of the National Italian American Foundation. Our fifth year in a row back in Cipriani's. Uh, very exciting night. We've got great honorees, another great crowd, and it's good to be back in New York. So this year we start the uh, Governor Mario Cuomo Award in Public Service that's dedicated to the memory of Governor Cuomo, really for his lifelong efforts in all he did to preserve his role as a leader for the Italian-American community as well. NIAF, National Italian-American Foundation, really is a organization which promotes uh, the values of the Italian-American community and uh, our language and our culture, which is vitally important. I think it's absolutely critical um, for my children and my children's children to understand um, where their 
great grandparents came, where their great grandparents came. Um, and uh, this is a way, NAF is an organization that helps ensure that um, young people understand kind of, you know, the Italian immigrant story. When I met NIAF, I found out how much they did uh, across the board. So it was a bigger platform, you know, to learn about. And I, I really enjoyed the experience. Our first focus was more discrimination and stereotyping which over the years as the Italian Americans began to integrate into American society this became a lesser problem so I think that now Italians are getting established and now the energy is focusing on new directions with 25 million Italian Americans people should recognize how wonderful the culture is and particularly the values of family uh, and friendship and giving uh, so uh, I think that's number one. Number two, uh, the social good that, that NIAF does with uh, scholarships and, and young people, I think, is a great cause, and uh, it's one that's worth spending time on. Vedo delle facce nuove, anche molti amici ovviamente, però delle facce nuove, interessanti e quindi forse è arrivato veramente il momento in cui la NIAF forse veramente sta dando una svolta e sta eh, diciamo, raggiungendo non solo le associazioni tradizionali ma i nuovi e vecchi italo-americani. At this point in our community's growth, uh, after 150 years of Italians coming to America, it represents a time now, multiple generations. I'm second generation on my mom's side first, um, uh, second on my dad's, third on my mom's. We're a different generation, and I think it's my, I see my role as introducing the communities of Italians all over the world in diaspora to one another in a new way, to say, hey, you know, we're more alike than we've ever been, and, and together, we can form a 200 million strong community of Italians around the world that can really do a lot of important work together. The National Italian American Foundation, we need the strength. You know, they say the Italians don't stick together. We need to stick together. And for me, having a young president like John Viola, I feel like it could be my son, my nephew, my cousin, and the relationship he could make everybody stick together better, and we need that. I'm delighted to see how some of the older board, the veteran board members, have gotten behind him. And it really speaks well for the future because we can't be 60 and 70 year olds wondering, holding on to old paradigms and wondering why 30 and 40 year olds aren't joining our groups or whatever. very complicated now and even though technology makes it easier for people to communicate what are you communicating and I think in order to be communicating and connecting in a way that is positive and successful you have to know where you come from you have to turn to your heritage and find the strength from your heritage because things are moving very very fast but what you retain is that core value and that's what it means to be Italian-American. I just hope that um, there's an opportunity for more people to see media that's more like uh, the Italian-Americans, the series, because it's authentic. And rather than stereotypes uh, that are portrayed sometimes when people look at Italian-Americans with this or with that, this is a real story about real people. Quando avevo 12, 13, 14 anni, volevo imparare l'italiano. Eh, era molto importante per me perché io pensavo che eventualmente la famiglia che io conosco, la, questa famiglia non va a essere qua, va a morire, eccetera. Mia nonna era, aveva 100 anni, 
Centani. We always said Centani, and she got it. She got her Centani, and then she went to God. But io pensavo che è molto importante essere una parte de, dei radici d'Italia. È importante per un italiano lavorare nel mondo del media? È molto importante, specialmente per, perché la popolazione qua negli Stati Uniti, 25-26% della popolazione, ha un po' di connessione con l'Italia. Con tanti italiani negli Stati Uniti è molto importante che ci sono rappresentativi nella televisione, no? che, nella televisione, che possono parlare italiano o che hanno una connessione con l'Italia. What does it mean to be here? Well, it's supporting, it's supporting that heritage in the United States, in, in, in America, and Italian heritage, and it's such a vast, um, important part of our society. Um, I've always been a proud Italian-American. The Italian-American community is uh, pretty well-defined. And Niav and John and the, the Frank Guarini, Sal Salabello, uh, Joe Del Razzo, all the guys involved in it are really uh, the leaders. They really do a great job. Uh, the school, the New York, uh, the La Scuola d'Italia, which is K through 12 Italian prep school, uh, was delighted to have honored John Viola this year. Largely as, and also not only as for his accomplishment, but he's a very good role model. So our children uh, profit by that. If there's one thing that Italy has really managed to um, to aggregate, as we might say, to bring together, that is business and culture, the political and culture. And it's something that we yet in the United States haven't done, I think, within the Italian American community. The, the committee here in New York always does a very nice job. So we have a, a good full crowd, I think a very um, worthy honorees, and also an evening uh, where we celebrate our uh, great Italian heritage. Tell, him, tell me something about uh, this new award, Mario Cuomo Award. Well, I, you know, we are uh, establishing the award for public service. And Mario Cuomo, uh, I think, exemplified uh, the best of uh, the Italian-American intellectual and, 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 and leadership capabilities. Uh, no matter what your politics, you have to admire, you know, what he accomplished and how he did it. And uh, so our whole community has always been very, you know, proud to name him one of our own. I am honored to introduce Governor Andrew Cuomo. He's made Italian-Americans proud. Please. It is truly my pleasure to be with the men and women of NIAF this evening. NIAF meant a lot to my father. He was an Italian-American first. He was the son of Andrea and Immacolata, poor immigrants who came to this country. And he was proud of it. And he never ran from it. He ran towards it because it's what made this country great. And they were that story. And he was proud to be a product of that story. Immigrants who came here only with the promise of opportunity in a country that was willing to work with them. And a country that said, if we work with you, you can become anything you want. Even governor of the state of New York, from parents who couldn't speak the language. He had no tolerance for discrimination, not as a citizen of New York, which is the capital of diversity, and not as an Italian-American who felt the sting of discrimination himself. My father's way of saying, God bless America, was to enter a life of public service. It was his way of giving back, and it was his way of using his talents to give back and make this place a better place. My father would often say that public service is the second greatest occupation, second only to dedicating yourself to a religious order and service of God. But after service of God was service of community, and that was public service 
for my father. My father was a man of honor, and he was a man of dignity. What you saw in public is just what he was in private. There was no public Mario Cuomo different than the private Mario Cuomo. He was one and the same. He was authentic. And it was a life of principle, and a life of commitment, and a life of dignity, and a life of honor. Even towards the end of his life, when someone is getting sick and someone is ill, you try to find goals for them to reach. And the end of last year, last September, October, he was, he was getting weaker. And I said, you know, Pop, just hold on for the election, my election in November. And I want you there with me, and I need you with me, and I want you on the stage with me on election night. And election night came, and he was on the stage with me. It was the last time he was in public, and he walked out on the stage, and I held his hand, and then I lifted his hand, and I felt the energy in his hand when he was looking out at the crowd. And we walked off stage, and he said, wow, what a crowd. They loved us, he said. <laughs> My victory was really my father's victory. He believes they voted for Cuomo. The first name wasn't that important. <laughs> and after November, I said to my father, you're going to make my birthday, and we're going to have a beautiful bottle of wine that we've been saving for my birthday early December. And then he was getting weaker, and I said, Pop, you have to be here for my inaugural, January 1, my inauguration. And he said, well, we'll talk about it. I said, no, Pop, I need to know that you're going to be here for my inaugural. And he looked at me and he said, I will be here for your inaugural. I said, do I have your word on it? He said, you have my word on it. Passed away the afternoon of my inaugural. I was sworn in. My sister put the phone next to my father's ear so he could hear the speech. He heard the speech. He heard the oath. He passed away. To his last minute, he was about honor and commitment and living up to his word. And that's what Mario Cuomo was all about. The entire Cuomo family is honored that NIAF has instituted the Mario Cuomo Award for Public Service. And you could not have picked a better recipient than District Attorney Janet DeFiore. It is such a privilege and a pleasure and an honor to have NIAF select me to be the first recipient of the Mario M. Cuomo Award in Public Service. To receive an award named in memory of such a phenomenal philosopher, statesman, such a magnificent human being, a great American, a fantastic Italian American, is certainly a privilege for me and something I am exceedingly proud of. So I was born and raised in the city of Mount Vernon. Uh, my family are 100% um, Italian lineage. We grew up in a very ethnic home that we shared with my grandmother, my grandfather, all of their children and all of their grandchildren. We all lived together. We ate together. We slept together. We were educated together. And our family, while not educated, knew instinctively the value and the transcendent value of education and educational opportunities in America. In Manhattan definitely loves NIAF. NIAF loves Manhattan. It truly was a great evening, but I really think that Governor Cuomo stole the show. He was amazing, so heartfelt 
the tribute to his dad, and then having Janet DeFiore, it was amazing. I, I just, um, I really had to fight back the tears. The other honorees were great. It, there was a lot of passion, energy. Um, it was, I thought it was a fantastic evening. Coming up on next week's episode, People, Stefano Albertini interviews Antonio Manda, author of Otabanga. Dolce Vita, the slow food movement. Dino Bori talks with founder Carlo Petrini. Genius, Fred Gardafay reviews a different biography of Marilyn Monroe. Events, Susan Hapgood presents New York 2014 Award winners. City, Francine Sagan meets Anne Daw. This edition of iItaly TV was brought to you by Colavita Extra Virgin Olive Oil. And Chirio Chopped Tomatoes.